Hi guys, I'm Tammy. Welcome to my channel. And today I'm teaching you how to paint these loose watercolor irises. They're very colorful and they're a lot more simple than they might look. We're going to do our basic washes and then add in some of those details over the top once everything is dry. So come on, if you want to paint with me, I'll show you exactly what to do. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Tammy and today we're going to be painting some simple irises on this composition. It's not a composition yet, it's going to be a composition when we're done. So we're just going to mix up some purple here. Now irises come in many shades, uh, various colors. So I've got this lovely purple here. We're going to start with adding a little bit more blue. I'm going pretty light. It gives us uh, the chance to be able to do more details later if we want to. So I'm going to go ahead and just start. We'll just start adding an iris right about here. So we're going to start with adding two of these petals um, that kind of, they go together like this at the top of the iris. So we're going to do a little wonky kind of wiggle, 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 C curve shape. And then on the other side, wonky, wonky C curve shape, filling in in the middle there. Okay, dip into our paint. We're going to do that. Oh man, there's so much water in my brush or paint. So we're going to do another one right here in the front. It's kind of like this diamond shape, but at the same time, we're still going a little wonky. And then we're going to do two more petals. A little, little thin part here, and then it kind of just goes down like this. And then one more here. And we can connect them too. I don't want them to look like anything is kind of floating here. So remember, we're not going for perfection. We are just simply trying to um, make a likeness of what an iris looks like. So we can take some of our paint and we can just dip into it. I don't even know what color that's going to be, but we're going to add a little bit more of that color back in. So just touching down on some of the areas and allowing that wet on wet spread to happen. And you know, we are just trying to make our little iris look fancy and pretty. All right. So we've got some pink here. And I want to start adding in a little bit of black just to darken this up a lot. I want to go for kind of a wineish color. So lots of water in my brush. And let's go ahead and do another one, uh, maybe just right here to the right side. We're gonna do that same kind of wonky. I'm gonna start a little bit farther down, a little bit like that. This is more of a burgundy color, that's okay. And so those are those two petals coming together. Um, there was a third one behind, we can't see it, and we're just gonna ignore it. We're not gonna put that one in. All right, let's do our front. So it's just kind of that same thing, just adding in those little petals, connecting things um, now to the right side, a little thin part, and then just kind of moving our brush to create a little bit of a ripple effect, kind of that lacy look that some of those iris petals can have. There's so many shapes that irises come in. And I was actually doing a little bit of a study on some of the irises. The other day I was sketching away and just trying to understand, you know, what they look like. Um, drawing is a really great way to do a study. It helps get a lot of accurate details down before you decide how you're going to paint things out. All right, so we have that one. Let's just do kind of an orangey yellow one right now. They do come in orange. It's crazy. Um, yeah, just go and look at pictures and you'll be amazed. They're quite the interesting flower, I would say. Um, I'm going to do one this way, but it's going to be kind of facing um, at an angle. So let's just try it. We'll just go ahead and a little wonky, 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 that first petal. And then the other one, a little bit of white space there. And then a little bit of a petal here in the front. You're just kind of leaning, a little slanting down. Now I'm getting confident and I'm starting to work faster, which sometimes is a good thing and sometimes it's a bad thing for me. Um, you know, if you are not creating a painting for some special event, you know, you can go ahead and just experiment and allow your brain to chill and not be worried about the end result of what's going to happen because it is just for fun. It's just for practice as we are doing today. Okay, I'm not planning on entering this into any competition. We're going to sop up some water, just that damp brush. 
suck up some of that water. It's too much on the paper. Um, I want to start doing just a few little buds too. So I'm going to do one right here, kind of like that center there, but just, just a little bit. Sometimes they're kind of round, a little roundish at the top. And um, we can do, let's see, what else should we do? So I have a reference photo I'm roughly following, and we're going to do another one in the front. I'm going to add a little more black to that. That is very black. So I'm going to add some red to that. And lighten it up a little bit. It's actually a really pretty color. I'm loving that. Loving it, loving it, loving it. So we'll do another one right here. And just practicing our irises today. A little bit of that wonky front. How are your irises coming along? I hope that you are enjoying putting that paint on paper. Let me know in the comments what other flower you would like to see me do a tutorial on. I don't like to seem to connect those today for some reason. These petals need to be connected. So anyway, and you know, make sure if you are enjoying this video to like it so that other people can hear about it and like it as well. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. I have an older channel, but this is my new one and I'm just kind of learning, um, not learning, but growing little by little. I just started a couple days ago uh, I do have another channel. Those are all linked um, in the description of this video. Is it the description of this video? If not, you can always go to my Instagram and the link is there in my profile for all the things. And so, yeah, just trying to make, see what we can do to grow. And I'm changing my style a lot. It's changed a lot over time. And I just wanted to have these accounts um, reflect that. Okay, let's do, let's do like a little bud over here. It's a little watery bud. There we go, a little bit of a bud, sop up some of that paint. Um, right now, things are looking a little bit just like kind of crazy all over the place, but let's do another flower and we can start adding in some greenery and we're gonna do some blue here. Nice blue iris, blue purple. And with all that greenery, that's gonna give us a better direction of where we're going with all of this. So I'm just gonna do that same thing. Two petals meet in the middle here. And it was pretty straight, but I can kind of make it a little more wonky because I wasn't paying attention to my instructions. Alrighty then. I'm doing the little front part. Sometimes when I start talking, I, I start forgetting and not remembering the, the things that we were doing. So anyway, irises are wonderful. I remember my grandma always had irises growing. My mom was saying the other day, Sunday on Mother's Day when I called her, um, that... You know, the irises we had, she didn't really like them because they were this kind of grayish purple. And I do remember that. But I thought they were kind of cool anyway. I just always felt like they were such a, a beautiful, glorious flower. And I don't know. I appreciated them. All right, let's do a few buds. Ooh, my. Sometimes this brush really does sop up a lot of paint, especially if it's very runny paint. And you can see that reflected sometimes on the... Um, on the paper. So I just sop it up a little bit um, with a clean damp brush and you know, we're good to go. I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so I'm gonna start adding in my foliage and I'm going to grab my dagger brush here. This is a quarter inch dagger. I just like it for that tip. I mean, I like it for many reasons, but that's why I'm using that today. I'm gonna grab some of my sap green color here. Kind of a sap green, it's a little bit more yellow I think than I'm used to. I splotched on my paper. Something you can do is to grab a paper towel and I have this little guy here, a little bit of a damp washcloth. And you can get most of it off. You can actually add some more greenery and such right there. And it's gonna be okay. All right, so we're gonna get our green ready. So it's a very light watery mix. Um, and we're just going to start adding in some of those stems, which aren't terribly thin. Some of them are a little bit, um, I'd say some stems of flowers are a little bit thinner than these guys might be. But I'm, I'm going to go pretty thin too. And then, of course, we're going to do our wonderful, wonderful um, leaves. That's the word, leaves. And leaves are really great 
to paint in and to fill out our whole composition. So I am not just, I'm not going to connect every single thing. This one's gonna come down like this as well and just kind of hang out. And I love the precision I can get with this brush. Actually, let's make it cross um, because you just can get really thin marks and it's just helpful when you're doing a composition. So we are, and you need thin marks. <laughs> um, we're gonna just kind of stagger some of these stems. They're not all gonna be at the same length coming down. That is my goal. Uh, if some of the stems touch each other, touch the florals, that's okay. Uh, it's it's watercolor, so it is gonna bleed, and that's just kind of part of the natural process of when you mix colors together. It's not gonna be a big deal, and it's actually kind of fun to see those colors uh, mix and match and do their whole thing. All right, so we have a lot of movement slightly to the right here. For whatever reason, that's what's going on. At this point, before I do anything else, what I want to do is add in that beautiful yellow that you see on the irises. And I'm gonna take my cadmium yellow here, just dip it in, and we're just going to add a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, just for some accent. It looks so pretty when it comes together. And you can do this while things are wet, but I chose to wait until things were dry just so that you're getting less of that blending and mixing and more of that really stark color, which is so pretty. Especially with your yellow, because your yellow, uh, it's, such a, it's such a light color and it kind of takes a lot more paint before you can actually see, um, see it really vibrant and bright. Um, it tends to disappear pretty easily. Right now it's kind of disappearing because that's a little wet and it's just wanting to, you know, kind of go in the background. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch back to, this is a number 12 brush and we're just gonna keep doing our layers. So I've got my lovely green on my palette, such a beautiful spring green. I really like it a lot. And we are going to start adding in more of the foliage. And so I'm just going to press down. This is a pretty thick um, foliage that starts here. And we're just going to kind of go there and and continue. It's in the background. This is all just sort of, sort of um, what do you call it, abstracty. And I'm just not like worrying too much about where those marks are going to go. Um, I'm not worrying too much about well, I'm trying not to, I should say. Um, there's definitely plenty of worry sometimes when we are painting on how things will turn out and you know where things need to go. But trying not to because we wanna just be really intuitive with the painting and enjoy making some of those marks. So I'm, I'm filling in some of this space with what could be um, some leaves really thick here getting thinner as we go out. Um, I'll do another one right here. And it would be fun to do a bright, a dry brush effect as well. So you could try that if you wanted to, uh, dabbing your brush after you have paint and then just kind of pulling across the page like that. And you're gonna get just a really thin layer and you're gonna get more of a dry effect. And so, like I said, I want this to be, at least for me, I'm trying to make this very intuitive and not too, um, not too strict. For example, I, I don't want to, add, I didn't want to add a sketch because I wanted to um, just kind of put those brush strokes down and sort of figure out the composition in the moment as we're doing here. Okay, so adding those together, it's coming together quite nicely. Uh, I think I'm gonna do a little dry brush as well. All right, so dipping in, dabbing, and then just do a little bit of that, a little bit of dry brush, and just some kind of marks here and there. Okay. Now, some of these guys, like the little buds, are gonna have a bit more of the green and going right there. And you know, we're not gonna be too realistic about this, but there's gonna be some green kind of covering over. So we're just going to, and there's usually like a thick area where it's connected to right here. 
And so just adding that in for little buds, they're very flat. I want to give them a little dimension too. And this guy here. Okay. All right. Um, so I think I'm gonna add a little bit of orange right here. I just wanted to give a little bit of an accent to this guy too, and that's gonna show up, that's good. All right, so we'll let all that dry there. I wanna add some more details with our irises. So I'm going to darken up some of this purple here. Um, and you know, this is, this is completely intuitive, however you'd like to do it. But I just wanted to add just a few little kind of marks, maybe to make some shadows and that kind of thing here with some of these petals. And I'm using this dagger, which has a really nice point to it. And so, you know, adding some of these sketchy lines can be pretty. Now this one I'm going to wait because I want to add in some white lines and you'll see what I mean in a minute. You can do really thin lines. I'm just adding some shadow moments so that we can see a little bit of that, you know, dimension as I was saying. You don't wanna have a, just a one-toned flower. It could get a little boring. Well, don't forget the little, the little ends of your petals too. You can add a few little marks if you feel like that is going to be pretty. And just do a little bit here on the tip of this. I can still do my white marks at the top. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this one for these guys. Same type of thing. I'm gonna keep moving this. I want this to be straight so that in the camera you guys are getting the straight shot version of that. Um, a little bit more of some pigment to add a little bit more um, flavor to this. And you might not do, you know, every single part of the petal. Now I think this just makes it really pretty when you start to add in some of these marks, some of these streaks, maybe stripes, blobs, you can change up the actual marks that you decide to do. And I like to keep it just kind of funky like that. Um, you know, definitely we're not doing symmetrical in any way. And this one here, I actually am gonna go this kind of bright orange, which is crazy, but I want it to contrast these little blobs that we put in. I want it to be a separate thing. So we're gonna just try to do this. A little bit of paint there. Yeah, I'm liking how these guys are coming together. If it's too bold for you, you know, you can always go lighter. You don't even have to do these marks if that's not, you know, what you're really into. And then we'll just kinda add a little bit there. Um, so I'm curious how you feel your painting is, is going right now. You know, definitely let me know in comments how this was for you. And if you feel like this was easy, um, something that you can do if you haven't painted it yet, um, if you plan on painting it in the future. And again, if you have any ideas of future tutorials like this, I, I'm all ears. I love to hear from you guys. Okay, all right. My little irises are starting to sing. Um, I'm going to add a little bit darker green now to my mix. We're just going to add some accents to these leaves. Okay, so you can choose to do some sketchy marks or just kind of blob on the paper. I'm really just um, trying to make it up as I go. And that's where you can get a really nice intuitive loose painting when you might, you know, maybe you need a loose plan, which I had today. I'm just gonna do some squiggly lines. Some of these are still wet, that's all right. Um, but when you have a reference photo, you can kind of, you know, map out sort of where you want things to go. It gives you a direction. You're not just like floundering and then you can feel a bit more confident where to place things. But yet at the same time, um, you know, maybe you haven't planned all the things and just do a few like little like sketchy guys. Because planning all the things isn't necessary, right? It might feel like it sometimes, but... Right now, we're just trying to come up with things as we see it, and that can be challenging, but it gets better with practice. So here I have a gel pen. This is a white pen. Let me make sure it's working. Of course, I couldn't see that on white paper. Ha <laughs> ha, go figure. So we're just gonna do a little line in the middle, 
And then we're just gonna do some little streaks. I just got these gel pens and I'm in love because I have been using, you know, if, if you are familiar with watercolor, we don't paint really with white watercolor pretty much ever uh, because it just doesn't show up. It's too transparent for the most part. Some people do, but you don't, you rarely see it consistently in a palette. And so when I found these, cause I'm usually using like a gouache, which is similar to an acrylic, but it's gouache. Um, uh, that's not showing up too much. That's okay. We might go over it again later or we might just leave it. I'm trying to rest my, the palm of my hand for more control. It's a little bit hard to do. So anyway, having this gel pen option, like I finally went and got them at the store and I'm just thrilled because they work so well. So these little curved lines accenting this top part here. How cute are these guys? I'm just gonna go all the way up for this one. It's hard to darken up white. White is just what it is. Sometimes it's a little challenging to see it. Do the best you can, as I am trying to do today. So that's okay. I can't see it too much. I can see it a little bit. It's doing the trick and that's okay. Uh, I think I'm going to do one more pass of this yellow. I am literally just popping my brush into that paint well to soak up some really concentrated paint. I think that is going to be a good um, ending point. And some splatter though. I wanna do some splatter, just a little bit here. This one, you know, it's got yellow, or it's got its orange, but just a little extra. All right, so now as things are pretty much dry, we're gonna see not really not that blending. And I might even just dot it in. Just whatever makes sense. We'll add a little bit more here. It's really showing up now. I love that. Really showing up nicely. This was a little wet here for some reason. So, I mean, you know, things just don't all dry equally. All right, so I hope you like how your painting is coming together. Of course, I don't feel like I'm done. I wanted to dip into this really beautiful, um, kind of a teal color. And it's got some the yellow from my brush in it, so it looks a little different. I wanted to desaturate a little bit, so I'm going to add in some of this reddish color. And there you have it. And now a little bit more of this. That's really pretty. And I think I wanted to add some actual um, other marks and maybe just like, maybe just darkening up some of these guys will be good. Um, but I wanted, I was, as I was painting this, I was thinking about this color and how beautiful it is. And I might even just add in some leaves. And I say that because I think I'm just gonna do that. So I'm just gonna add one right here. It's darker, just to fill up the space a little bit more. And a little bit. A few little brush strokes here. I almost dipped into the purple. Sometimes I feel like I need a little bit more in between everything. Just a little bit extra. So we can just pretend that these are like grassy marks or something like that. Um, but I'm really liking the color of this. It's just giving it a little bit of an accent to what we already have placed down. A little bit of dry brushing there can go a long ways. And I think we better walk away while we are ahead. So here's our painting. Thanks for being here, guys. And I hope you enjoyed this. Um, make sure to check out my Patreon. It's linked in the description of the video if you want bonus content from me where I teach watercolor. And that's where I do uh, live stream and I have art prints and exclusive tutorials. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next video. Take care.